And look who's here at the table, Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro. <laughs> Italian American Week in Connecticut. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm excited. This is great. Where's your family from? What part of Italy? Uh, well, uh, my mother's family is from Amalfi, from the coast. Which the is beautiful... our sister city in New Haven. That's right. Amalfi is a sister city. My dad was born just uh, near the uh, uh, city of uh, the town of Pompeii, near Naples, a small town called Scafati. And uh, he, was, he was there. My dad was born there. My mom born here. But both of her parents uh, are born in, uh, in Amalfi. Do you speak Comfort? Italian? How much I, Italian do you speak? Uh, no, that's just, it's really the, the craziest thing. Uh, I understand it. And when I do go to Italy, I can get by. I, I, I can understand and I can make myself understood. But I, when I grew up, it was about learning English. Right, and they wanted to hide their That's right. ethnic background. I, you know? I'm Swedish, and it was the same yeah. thing. My grandparents came from Sweden, mm -hmm. and they wanted to learn English, didn't want to know anything about Sweden. Yeah. Same well, thing. But, but, right, but it was, it, we, we had, it, it was filled with, uh, you know, being Italian, Italian culture, but it was about if you were going to succeed, then you had to know English. Uh, and you should speak English. And the, for me, the worst tragedy that I didn't learn to speak fluent Italian. My, my, my mom spoke dialect, but my dad spoke just perfect uh, uh, Italian, so much so that uh, when, uh, when he had work here, he was a city court interpreter for, really? uh, uh, for immigrants who were coming because th they couldn't read or write the language. Uh, why did your family settle in New Haven? Who was somebody already here that you came to New Haven? How, how did you get here? Oh uh, well, I think with regard to, you know, I, to my mom's uh, 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 side of the family. I mean, it was just the East Coast. I think they they, they 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 came, and there may have been some before they came, and this was the part of the country that they engaged in. My father's family, they had uh, he had relatives. Uh, uh, here, others who had come before him. So they, um, uh, they, they settled. My dad came at age 13. With uh, probably hardly any money. Oh, no, no, uh, really. And he couldn't read or write the language or speak the language. When did, pol and you've been in politics, you, you've been a congresswoman for 25 years 25 now? 25 years, yeah. That's yeah. a really long time. It's a long time. How did you get your start in politics? And it goes back oh, in your family. Oh, it goes back. It so goes all let's the talk way back to my, to my folks. I would have just it's an interesting story because I, I told you my dad came and he couldn't speak the English language. And he was at, at school, uh, Columbus School, and in the seventh grade, they asked him to um, define the word janitor and he didn't know what it meant so he drew on his Italian uh, and he came up with the word genitori which means parents and his teachers and his classmates laughed at him so my father left school in the seventh grade so he only went here to the seventh grade as formal education now he educated himself uh, he taught himself to play the clarinet. He was the first clarinetist at the, uh, in the army uh, band. And what a terrible band. thing that he would be so embarrassed and, and ashamed left. and school. left. Yeah. And fortunately, we don't do those things anymore. Thank we embrace culture. culture. But we then he culture. became called the mayor of, of Worcester Square. Square. Right. So what you know, he did his whole life was uh, uh, devoted to, uh, to, you know, to public public service, um, and uh, so he uh, worked uh, for the. Uh, First of all, he was an insurance salesman. He went door to door during the Depression, and uh, uh, where people, he, if they couldn't pay, he would say, you, you know, that's okay, pay me next week. You know, finally, I think my mother said, you know, look, we have to live too. So, in any case, but he, I, I, I'm saying this because it was his career in public service, and he was always uh, looking at how to work to help the community, how to help people make their way through the, uh, the, the, the system. Uh, he work, worked for the New Haven Redevelopment Agency. Well, first he was elected to the Board of Aldermen. Interesting story. Um, that time, Arthur Barbieri, John Golden, um, uh, and he, my father was a big supporter of, of Dick Lee's and helped to get him elected. But they asked my dad to run for, uh, for Alderman. Uh, that time it was the 10th Ward. And, uh, uh, but they said to him, Teddy, we, we're not going to win this ward because it's a Republican ward. But look, if you can, we lose, you lose by seven, eight hundred votes. If you can knock it down to a couple hundred votes, we will have made progress. Um, and this, I say because this had to do with me as well. 
I slept with my father from door to door with my door to door. Right. I'm watching him go in, sit down, and they used to call him by his you know Italian name Tito. Uh, my my dad's name was Titus. The folks at uh, Ellis Island changed it to Theodore, and they said, "Come, sit down." And he talked to them. Um, and uh, uh, when in every household rain, so it didn't make any difference. He was he was out there, and I went with him a lot of the times. And I have his file box now that's got all of the cards that have the person's name and whether or not he marked it red or blue. If you were blue, you were a Democrat, red for for a re Republican. And um, but I learned and I observed politics. Well, that election, he won on the machine. But he lost by nine absentee ballots. No recount? No, no, no. So what he did was he ran again, and then he won. And he served on the New Haven Board of Aldermen. And what did that do for him as an Italian-American winning yeah. and serving? Mm -hmm. What did that do for him? Well, you know, the, 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 the political process for every ethnic group is critical to advancement, to being able to uh, uh, legislate, if you will, uh, on behalf of the people that you represent. Keeping in mind that before the Italians, and even before the Italians in Worcester Square, there was the Irish. And so the Irish were here first. They held the political positions. They were members of the, of the Board of Aldermen. Uh, so that, as an Italian, to gain that seat meant that the interests of this community would be represented. Uh, and that, that has been true for the uh, uh, African American community, for the Hispanic community, because getting engaged and involved in government is where you can help to make the changes, help where you can help to deal with advancement. So he had that experience on the board. Then, I think it was about the time I was, I was in high school at that time, and uh, uh, I went to, I was on my way to college, etc., and uh, my dad then, the Board of Aldermen was a non-paying job. But you're working hours and hours and absolutely, hours. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, his politics, both of my folks, their brand of politics was one-on-one, -on -one, person to person, mano a mano. It was engaging, you know, that individual and what they needed. Um, but he he went to the he went to the, the the political folks at the time the the political powers. He said, "Look, it's a non-paying job. I've got a daughter going to college. We're, I'm not going to be able to afford to do that. So I have to give this up. I need to get a paying job." Um, and so that's what he did. And he went to work for the New Haven Redevelopment Agency. And to your um, mom, how does she get going? My mom is years later, but. Uh, uh, you know, my, my mother worked in the old sweatshops in New Haven on State Street. Sure. My mom was a garment worker. And, uh, you know, I tell this story all the time. I used to go to meet her after school uh, every day. And I think she did that. There was method to her madness. She uh, wanted me to see uh, these women, mostly immigrant women, uh, you know, shoulders bent over that sewing machine, pumping the dresses out. For how much an hour? Peace work. It was, you know, 10 yeah. cents a collar, 50 cents a dress, you know, whatever, whatever it was. And, you know, I, I, you think about today, when you, the, the noise from those power machines sure. is unbelievable. But you also are moving so fast that sometimes you get the needle in your finger. And, you know, you don't go to the, get a tetanus shot. You don't go to a clinic. You take your hand, you wrap it up, because if you get, a blood, if you get blood on a piece, on that garment, sure. you don't get paid for it half-eaten lunches, etc., And she would say, go to school so that you don't have to do this. So my parents' struggle and their sacrifices was about my being able to get an education, and a first-rate education. And I'm sure that's never lost on you. Never, never lost Serving on in me. the U.S. House of yeah, Representatives. No, I'm just, a, I stand on their shoulders. Let's start looking at some of these great pictures okay. that we have. And I want you to take a, a walk down memory lane. Sure. Where is this, Rosa? That is my grandmother's pastry store. Tell and me about what What was being Canestri's, made? Canestri's pastry store uh, on Worcester Street, which is now the site for Consiglio's oh, restaurant. Sure. Uh, I, 
grew up there, went there. My mom worked during the day, went there after school. The woman in the middle is my grandmother, Louisa Canestri. My mom is named after her, uh, Louisa. Uh, that's her uh, father, Paul. My grandmother was widowed uh, 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 at a very young age. My grandfather, Cesare Caesar, he died when he was 34 years old. Wow. He died in Spanish influenza. My grandmother had five children with one on the way. Mm. So my grandfather, Paolo, uh, he said to her, your husband is gone. He says, I will take his place. And he helped her. And my mom and her siblings lived on Olive Street. And my grandmother was in the, in the store. And first of all, they had a catering business. And they were catered to uh, weddings or all kinds of events. But then they, they made Italian pastry. Um, you know, the... Uh, As a kid walking in there, uh, how long did, did this last? It was, a, it was a business. It was, it was a, you know, 50, 55 years. It ended when my grandmother passed away uh -huh. because then it was, you know, everyone went to the store. Where right. are you going? We're going down the store. Of course. And we were there uh, working. My aunts, my mother would go. They were, uh, you know, making the pastry, doing the trays of cookies, etc. They used to have the kids make the boxes. I made more boxes for pastry at various sizes because they had to they had to put us uh, put us to work. But so you made cannolis, you made cream puffs. They, they made cream puffs. They made cannoli. They made sfogliatella. Those are they looked like a little clam. At at, at Easter time, there was the Italian Easter uh, bread, if you will. And my my, I I have these molds. I have two or three of them. They made the Easter lamb out of sugar. It was in the mold. Uh, and then I can still see my grandmother uh, painstakingly. She put a ribbon around the neck of the lamb and then with a color do the, uh, the cheeks and the, the, you know, put coloring in the face of the lamb and so forth. And they, and they sold those. She did um, a, a marzipan uh, uh, fruits. And again, I can see her. And that's what I have, you know, like a persimmon or an orange or so forth. And with the, her neck, she used to go down. Did the, you ever help the bake dough. anything? Uh, or did uh, you just do the boxes? We, we, we did that, but I watched. And I, you know what we used to do? Um, sometimes, they would, you know, we would roll, you know, roll the sure. dough. I have, the, I have her, my grandmother's rolling pin. But have you ever used it in your own home? In my own now? home, no. It's a wooden There's still rolling time, pin. Rosa. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs> uh, I also, I will tell you one other thing because I, I do have the copper pot. I asked my uncles if I could have that after my grandmother passed away. Uh, my aunt, one of my aunts, Ray, Raffaella, uh, 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 she used to make the Italian cream. So the fire was on. She had a big paddle, a wooden paddle, and she used to sit there stirring it and stirring it. So. I, I found it in the in the basement of the store, and I said to my uncles, it, it, "I would love to have it." So that's in my home uh, today. They made the Italian taron, the zeppoli de San Giuseppe, the uh, zeppels for Saint Joseph, uh, all of that. And they made us fill the cannoli. So I will tell you this. Okay. However, my grandmother was very observant. She said, the regatta had to go all the way through. There couldn't be any holes in the middle of the uh, of the cannoli. So that, that, and when you bit into the center, there was a cream filling as well. So oh, it was are, a great place, great, great place to grow up. Great place to grow up. All right, another picture. There's oh. a whole oh my God. bunch of folks in here now. Yes. Wh where yeah. is this? What year and who the, are these? I, you folks? know what? I, do, I, I don't know the year, but you see, my, my mother's family, two sisters, uh, uh, Louisa Coppola and Caroline Coppola married two brothers, Cesare, Caesar Canestri, and Michele, Michael Canestri. So they so, kept it Italian. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, and you see, both of the, uh, the, um, the brothers uh, uh, came from Amalfi. Um, Michael uh, was the, the, um, uh, the, the, the kind of like the, the maitre d' of the Hotel Luna in, in, in Amalfi. My grandfather was the pastry chef. Oh. And what my grandfather did, uh, my grandfather baked the pastry at night. He worked days in sergeants. And my grandmother sold the pastry during the day. So that's, you know, and, and she did the, the selling, etc. And then obviously when he, he died, um, uh, she just carried on. She just carried on the pastry Women store. Strong but, uh, you know, I saw this morning on your uh, on the on the on the on the show that they talked about sergeants. Sergeants did have buses, uh, boats. 
that oh, picked up right. the immigrants, yeah, yeah. brought them here. They didn't have to pass through Ellis Island and so forth, and, and took to them to work. So, so many families uh, had, uh, you know, they family were working. They were recruiting, they were recruiting. in Italy. They were yeah. recruiting in Italy. And I think Mrs. Sargent was very responsible uh, for that. Now, this photograph, so you have, my, my, as I say, my, my, um, uh, uh, my grandfather had passed away, Cesare, but this is my grandmother, Louiselle, Louisa, her sister, Caroline, Caroline's husband, Michael. This is, now they had obviously two sets of children, but they all have the same names. Like? There's a Carmel, my, I, have a, I had an Aunt Carmel, and a cousin Carmel, and Uncle Louis, and a cousin Louis, a, an Uncle Caesar, and a cousin Caesar, Louise and Louise. You had to have a Maria Ray in there somewhere. and Ray. Well, I, it was just, yes, Mary, <laughs> my Aunt Mary, where's, this is my Aunt Mary right here. This is unbelievable. This is my uncle, and my, my uncle Louis and Caesar had the um, uh, plumbing, eastern plumbing and heating. Uh, this is Louis Canestri, Caesar Canestri, Raffaella, Louise, she's now Cusano, but uh, she was a, a Canestri. Uh, this is Carmel, and this is Carmel, the two Carmels. Okay. <laughs> was it little Carmel was, and big Carmel? Big Carmel. Yes, that's exactly this right. Big Louis and little. You got it. At, you're there. You got it. This was it. But this is where I grew up. It was fabulous. I'm an only child, but I had well, not really the whole family, well, right? right? The cousins and so forth. And every Sunday, every Sunday, sauce. We ate at my grandmother's store. It's, and you know what? That's we're, that was we're command that. performance. Yes, command yeah. performance. Yeah. yeah, you talk about your week. You talk about the next week that's right. coming up. You stayed family. Um, I, I'm assuming somebody right. made sauce or oh, gravy. No, are you, you kidding? Called it. No, no, we call it sauce. Okay. Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, they call it gravy. They don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but we get but 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 sauce. Auntie Pass, my aunt Carmel, God, God rest her soul. She was single. She was the only single one. She would make a big antipasto with the peppers, with the eggplants, with the salami, with the cheese. And we were kids. We'd go by, we'd grab this piece, grab this. She would go, don't ruin the antipasto, you're ruining the antipasto. We started with that. We had sometimes, you know, uh, uh, escarole soup. And then we had macaroni, you know. It's layer uh, upon layer. layer. And yeah. then we'd have chicken and meat. And then, you know, we always finished with chestnuts and fennel and dessert. Yeah. And honest to God, it was, it was... I, and we had, my uncles had a very big elliptical table made, and we all sat around that table. You had to be there for But lunch. a conversation can take place around a round yeah. table. Oh, yeah. It's easy. You it's see easy. this? Yes, that's right. <laughs> and we were all facing one another, and, but you had to be there, no matter, yeah. you didn't go off with your friends, you didn't go to, you know, wherever it was, Sunday afternoon was really sacred, and you had to be there. My uncles got, God bless them and rest their souls. Um, um, my Uncle Caesar would be at the Worcester Spa gambling. <laughs> okay. So, and, um, and we would be waiting, and we would be waiting to have lunch, and we didn't he have lunch. He kept you guys waiting. Well, my Uncle Louis, my Uncle Caesar, sometimes my Uncle Louis was doing a job, somebody in the plumbing business, and, you know, we would be sitting waiting, and that, by that time, my mom, you know, my, my father, my Aunt Ray's a husband, every, everybody was hungry. My Uncle Jerry was sitting and waiting for Louis and Caesar because my grandmother would not, these were her sons, my grandmother would mm. not have dinner without her sons. But then she was diminutive in size, but strong. Don't mess like, with her. Don't mess with her. She would take her apron off. She would put it down. She'd walk up the block to the, to the Worcester Spa, and she'd go, Chaz, let's go. And she would grab him and take him back to the store so that we could all start eating and have, oh have our God. lunch. Great well, story. That is great a great story. story. Great all right, we have two folks here. Oh, these are the matriarchs. This is my great-grandmother uh, and, uh, uh, and my grandfather, and my great-grandfather. And they came over what oh, year? Oh, my God, Jesus. Remember? They got to be the 18. Yeah, 18. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this was the yeah. first... Family, family members that came that's right. and that's set right. up shop, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, that's right. That's and then right. you all came. And then they had, uh, they had, I think, 11 children. Uh, my grandmother was, I think she was the oldest. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, it's, it's interesting because she was having children at the same time some of her children oh, sure. were having children. Sure. So It never um, stopped. It didn't, it, it, you know, it didn't <laughs> stop. And uh, honestly, we would go to visit uh, Anon. Uh, we used to go visit Anon and Nonna. Uh, uh, 
uh, for the for the holidays and even other times we had to go Palm Sunday, we go Easter, you had to go by and And was this all in Worcester Square? Did no, they stay? lived uh, she lived on Bishop Street. Oh, okay. She lived on Bishop Street. I never knew my uh, my great grandfather. I did know my my great grandmother. Was yeah. she fun? Was she little um, as well? Yeah, she was. She's very she was very very tiny, but another strong, strong I love hearing that. strong woman. What do we oh, have here? Oh my god, this is uh, my my dad was honored. Um, they gave a testimonial dinner uh, uh, for him uh, when he was it's Alderman Theodore Deloro, and he was he was giving up the the, the job, so they had a testimonial dinner for him. Uh, the person who followed him was Jimmy Lambert, um, and then I think a woman uh, uh, changed parties to Carmel Scapetta, um, but they asked me to present the gift, and I was uh, it was very very emotional. Um, uh, I remember that. I think I started to cry, you know, but I, you know, it was a briefcase. I know we, we gave him a, we gave him a briefcase. Did you know at that time that you might enter into politics no, at all? Never. No, never. And at the time my mom was not uh, in, in, involved with politics uh, yet because it was years later that then she ran in her own right uh, for the 8th Ward. Um, uh, and she lost twice. What was the bug that said to her, because she served from 1965 to 1999, mm -hmm. what was the turning point where she said, I'm going to do this too? I'm going yeah, to run. Yeah, no, that, that's... Do you remember I, what, what You know, I'm it? trying to... You know, look, <clears throat> I've always said that if, if, if my mom had had the education that she and my dad gave me, she would have ruled the world. She was a strong person. Did you ever say that to her? Um... I'm not sure I did. Probably you not, because she's a, 101 years old, which and is she, extraordinary. She served 35 years. She's not just the longest serving woman. She's the longest serving member of the New Haven Board of Alders in the history of the city. And I, of, I always say that she held six mayors accountable. <laughs> and she was there was no messing with her oh my gosh yes yeah and she would call department heads you know their, their brand of politics both but for both of them was you know if somebody needed a job they went and they tried to help them do it if they had trouble navigating the system with social security um, and it was around our kitchen table people came to our home and if it was an immigration problem, if it was a social security problem. Um, one night we had a phone call at the table um, and uh, my mother put down the phone and she got up and she was going out and my father said, Lou, wh wh where are you going? And she says, I'm going to Columbus Mall, there's been a shooting there. So he said, what, what are you gonna do? She says, I don't know. She says, but I'm going, you know? And so she was engaged and involved in every part of this neighborhood, as was my dad. When they did redevelopment there, my father spoke to every single person to talk to them about their homes. My mom and dad, when they had the plan to bifurcate Worcester Square, to mm -hmm. put a highway through, sure. they stood in front of the bulldozers. They really, you know, their and whole people life wonder was where in you this got your area. Strength, well, right? That's, you know, so. All right. Who do we ah, have here? This is, we, we are at I can tell you just exactly I'm where the we table. are. It looks like the 1940s. Yes, or yeah. Stainless this was steel. this was at uh, my aunt Nettie's house, and she lived. Um, my God, it's, it's gone uh, over uh, the, the 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 bridge near Humphreys, where Humphreys is okay. now, is jo jo Jocelyn Square, and Nettie uh, uh, Coppola Balsamo. At age, I think at age eight, uh, with a visiting cousin from Italy who was a a priest, um, he wanted to take one of the um, one of the children back with him to Italy. I think my mother was a candidate, but I, I to think, visit or no to oh. stay for a while to stay to okay. stay. Well, in any case, my mom didn't go. She wasn't going anywhere. Uh, my mother was, but my aunt Nettie went, and she went, and uh, she spent years there, married there, etc. And then they came here um, uh, with their two children, Fausta and Dino. And we used to go to their house on Friday nights, and my Aunt Nettie would cook, and uh, we used to have dinner with them. And then they would come. She used to work in Schartenberg's, which is downtown. Sure. So her family used to come to our house on a Thursday night, and uh, my mom would cook 
you know, for, the for all of them. The families were so tight then. So now we're scattered all over really, the place. So, really, so, so close. Um, all, we, we picnicked in the summer, the entire family. I mean, the cooking was unbelievable. We never saw anything like it. My uncles would go out at 6 o'clock in the morning. They would go to Lake Quasipog. Uh, they'd go to Wharton Brook. They'd pick out the site. And if you were really lucky, you got to go with them early in the morning because that was great fun. You were, you know. Um, um, uh, and, and then the rest of the family would show up. It was like Patton's Third Army, this <laughs> movement. <laughs> they would go and the, and the chicken, the eggplant, everything you could possibly do. And we would be there until 8 or 9 o'clock at night. It and was think of the, the stories. Best, the best. We had such Now, would you ever invite time. friends, or was this only family? Uh, it, was, it was pretty much on, okay. only family. But, you know, look, you could invite friends anywhere, anytime. My, my house was a place where I could, I, could, I, I could call my mother, and I used to do this from when I was in college. You know, I got three or four of my college friends coming home with me. Absolutely, come anytime, day or night, and my mother would would cook, they could stay. Uh, our house was always, always open. I think uh, your house is too. You, it, you know, it is, and I do I, with with my um, with with my kids, with my my stepkids. You know, they say, you know, Ro, can anybody come? Yeah, I said, you, you don't, have, you, you know, better. Of course, they can come. You know, you know, they're they're more than it's welcome. It's a great way to live. It is. I, you know, I love it. I love it. This is me and my dad, and this is on Pearl Street. Uh, and it looks to me like, with the dress that I have on, that it probably was like, the, my mother used to make all my clothes, by the way. Wow. It looks like it was a May crowning or something. And Do you then, remember that? Oh, I remember. I, of course. It's St. Michael's. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and you know, St. Michael's is the mother church. Sure. It's, you know, in uh, 1900, there were 5,000 Italians in New Haven. By the 1920s, there were 60,000. We had, I mean, in the state, there were, it, it was the largest ethnic group in the it's city third, of New Haven. It's about a third Italian, Connecticut. That, that's right. Yeah. No, it is. We vie with Rhode Island for which, yes. which state is the most Italian. there's a little New Jersey Italian. they try to get in right, every yeah. once in a while, too. And my congressional district is probably one of the most uh, Italian-American districts in the, um, in the country. And it really so. hasn't changed. It's just continued to grow. Right. No, it's true. They spread out. Sure. You know, they've gone and people, I, I, I met someone, I was in, I was in Woodbridge earlier, uh, uh, today and I met Andy Esposito, and uh, he lived in Ham. He says he grew up in, on uh, at the corner of of Brewery and Worcester Street. And I remember the story. It was a meat market, and he was there. And then he said he moved to Hamden. You know that was he like went the, so far. The, it went so far. He moved <laughs> to Hamden, but it was, it, 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 you know, people moved to the to uh, to the suburbs. But this is the backyard of my my dad's uh, stepmother, uh, Veneranda uh, Deloro. She lived on. Uh, on Pearl Street. We lived on Pearl Street. We lived at 79 Pearl Street, and then we moved to 352 Green Street, and then to 538 uh, Chapel Street. You're so Street. good to remember all those addresses. I, 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 I must tell you, the memories for me, I mean, when I think about, you know, Worcester Street, with, um, I, I, can see, I can see the street at the top of the, the corner. There was the, the shoemaker. Uh, and then there was the Libro Barber Shop, uh, Johnny the Butcher. He used to go down the street to my grandmother's. It was just down the street every afternoon because my grandmother always had the Italian coffee on the stove. And he would get himself a Natazza Cafe, a little a, a cup of Italian coffee there, and he would, he would go back. He and his dad had the butcher store. There was Sarno's. There was Millie's, the candy store. Um, uh, what an enchanting place. I, I, I will tell you, Max Bear, the clam shucker, usually on a Friday night, Ernie and his brother, the Buccamayellos with the spot restaurant. And our, my grandmother's pastry store was right next door to uh, the, uh, 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 the spot. And in the, in the summertime, the windows were open with the baseball game. And on this street, everyone was a Yankee fan, but more than that, it was Joe DiMaggio. Mm. And you never, it was never how were the Yankees doing, it was how was Joe doing. And so with the, the uh, uh, and people were in and out of each other's homes. You had uh, the spot, you had Peppies, you had uh, Sally's, you had Sarno's across the street, you had the dry goods store, you could go in there, you could buy everything. 
anything you ever wanted was in you this little store. You never had to store. leave this area. You never it had to leave village. the area. And you had Cavalieri's, um, you had the Cavallaro's, you had all, all of the, everything that you could possibly, you know, need. Up the block was um, Rosetti's, the, you know, the restaurant at the other, uh, at the, at the other end of the, uh, of the block. And you know, um, Sal Consiglio was a nephew of Frank Pepe. And uh, he used to work there. Then he opened up his own, his own business. Did you ever run into Frank Sinatra? Uh, no, but I knew um, uh, 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 Sal's brother, you know, Tony, with all the, sure. with all the photographs, uh, all the photographs there. And interestingly, the Peppies came to uh, my parents' wedding. And I have it in my house now because I commandeered it from my mother. Nicely done. Uh, it's a beautiful, one of those old-fashioned jardiniers. Sure. You know, the ceramic, the big bowl, and then the pedestal. That was a gift from the Peppies to my folks when they got married. Now, the ties, the way, but I can see this street. And then one of the best things would be if my Uncle Caesar came down the street and all of us kids were there, he'd scoop us all up, get in the car, we would go out to Savin Rock. Oh, you know, what's better than out that? Out the rock, you know, it was so, great. music on this street, do you remember music on this street? Sure, well, we had the feasts all the time. We had, we celebrated the, sh the entire street, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Andrew. And by the way, the societies played a big, big role. Sure. Santa Maria della Vergine, um, uh, St. Trophimina, St. Catello, uh, St. Andrew, uh, St. Mary Magdalene. The these were oases for the families who came. They supported the families, good times, bad times, uh, and they still exist. They were the, the keepers of the flame, if you will, of the, of the, uh, uh, of the culture, of the, uh, of the history. And each of them, St. Andrews would have the uh, Avest, the festival. Sure. Yeah. And it used to be the entire street. I, I want to come back and magic, live there, Rosa. Magic. All right, who, who do we have here? We have my dad with his knickers. You believe this? <laughs> it's in front of my grand. I think it's in front of my grandmother's store. And that's Mr. Sarno. There was Sarno's was across the street. He was the baker, and Mrs. Sarno was a very heavy set woman. And on the Fourth of July, she would put her chair in front of the bakery because the fireworks were on Worcester Street, and and my uncles were the ringleaders of of all of the, the fireworks, they gathered everybody, they would go south, they'd buy the fireworks in defiance of the New Haven Police Department. <laughs> they would be up on the, on the roof throwing them off. But Mrs. Sarner would sit there and she would laugh and chuckle at all of this mayhem on the street. Um, uh, and, and, you know, you, you can't, it, it was such a, so vibrant and so alive. And there were always people on the street. And, and adults watching out for kids. Didn't make any difference who your mom and dad were. So you couldn't get away with a lot. Oh, they were watching. God, they were watching. Yeah. They were always it's a good thing they were watching. watching. They were always watching. And then the families took care of each other as well. Last picture. Yes. Remember uh, this day? Yes, I do. All right, tell me about yes, it. Yes, I do. Um, this was in City Hall, in front of City Hall. We had. Um, Hillary Clinton was in this front row here, um, and there were signs in the front row that, um, uh, uh, you know, we were Clinton Gore. That's what we were doing. We were electing a president uh, and a vice president, and, uh, and, and, and we did it. But Hillary was in this front row, and there were also signs at the time. Chelsea was trying to think about what college she was going to, and we had a whole group of folks saying, Yale, Yale, Yale. So this is Senator Dodd over here. Um, and it was, it was grand, and I had, you know, wonderful opportunity uh, uh, to be able to, uh, uh, to speak and to talk about uh, Hillary, talk about the Clinton-Gore ticket, and I campaigned, you know, all over the country for, for the Clinton-Gore ticket. And, you know, I, I look at this, and it is bittersweet in this sense, uh, because my dad never saw me elected to the House of Representatives. My mom was there, um, and... Um, uh, she was standing right there, and actually Dodd had, Senator Dodd had privileges to be on the floor, so he was right on the floor of the House with me when I raised my hand to be sworn in, and my mom was in the gallery. Uh, but I'm my guessing you felt your dad. Oh, God. You know, he said to me, because I told you, what an extraordinary education. You know, St. Louis School, Laurelton Hall, uh, uh, Marymount College, 
London School of Economics, Columbia University for a master's degree. And my father said to me, one uh, an anecdote, one funny thing. When I finished, I got my degree in international politics. He said, he said well, you're qualified to, you know, to foment a, rev a revolution. He says, now you've got to go out and get a job. You know, what are you going to do? But he said to me about politics, he says, you've got a lot of good book learning. He says, you've got a great education. But if you ever want to be in politics, you've got to understand people. You have to be on the street, know who they are, know what their lives are about, and get involved with what their lives are about, and help them to make a difference. And, you know, it, for, for me, growing up in an Italian Catholic household with parents that I've had and their brand of politics is what motivates me every day. It's not the 25 years I've had the honor of serving in the House of Representatives, but it is coming from those roots which taught me the values that have brought me to the House of Representatives and that I try to carry on every day. In their name, I stand on their shoulders. I am who I am because of the sacrifices that they made on my behalf. Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro, thank you. Thank you. For telling us all of these stories. Thank you very much. I made a trivial pursuit, spun one this end. Who is this girl I spend all night kissing? And if one was right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution. I find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep locked in the grocery store of my mind. Just the same time. Right ahead in the nice ride The harder we look, the 